Some modules have the Raspberry Pi Pico W surface mounted without breaking out the SWD single wire debug port. Boards like the Unicorn range from Pi Moroni, which are otherwise excellent. Does this force us to only use boot cell for flashing? No. One way around this is to use a pogo pins for a temporary connection. Let me tell you all about it. Hi, I'm John, your concierge to the world of the Raspberry Pi Pico, Pico 2, robotics, IoT, and any other fun tech. Remember to subscribe and join the community. I've touched on this before a little when I used a prototype board to patch a very bad pogo board connection. It was bad because the SWD port and GPIO ports on the Pico W are not on a consistent 2.54 millimeter grid. To get around this, I've had to design a custom but very simple PCB and get it fabricated by our wonderful video sponsor, PCBWay. Stay tuned to see how all this works. If you like this video and it helps your learning or projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment link that's in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco, and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there, and I'd love to meet you all there too. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to uh, like and to subscribe for more. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Building this adapter board just would not be possible without a PCB fabricator like PCBWay. PCBWay are set up to help hobbyists and those prototyping their manufacturing small volumes of PCBs, which is perfect for this project. They allow me to order the PCB online and provide loads of options. PCBWay then check the PCB design, manufacture it and ship me the PCB in about a week to give me that big smile when the PCB arrives. In my projects, when I'm using a Pico W, I normally solder up the connectors on the side to actually connect it to my board and that SWD port, the debug port as it's labeled on the Pico W. And that's because that's how I choose to actually flash the device and indeed run up debuggers like GDB against the device. And I use a Raspberry Pi debug probe and I've got other videos talking about how to do that. Now with some boards that I get and some uh, displays particularly, then this Pico W has already been surface mount soldered onto the back of the board. So does this mean that we can only then do boot select as the only approach to actually um, flashing the device? Well, no, there is another way around. So the way around I'm going to use is using these things called pogo pins. And pogo pins are designed to make temporary connections, generally for test purposes or indeed for flashing like we're going to do here, to the board. And they do that by basically having a pressure connection to the board rather than actually being soldered. So a pogo pin is uh, about six or seven millimeters long. On the left hand side, you've got the bit that actually gets soldered onto your uh, host board or the board that um, is going to uh, provide the connections and uh, that's basically got a little bit of a uh, collar there to just hold the pin in place and then the actual butt of the pin that, that you're going to solder in place. The rest of the pin is then this spring loaded connector and that's the bit that actually is going to make contact with the board and we can apply a bit of pressure to make sure that's got a good contact. Of course, these are gold coated so that they don't actually corrode, so they give a good connection. So I want to use these for this SWD port here. So these three pins. So we're definitely going to have pogo pins in there. And to make sure that this is stable, I'll put a couple of pins at the top end on the ground pins just so that then I can actually clip the device in place and I know that it will uh, uh, be nice and square and, and stable. Now, of course, I might actually want access to other pins on this device as well. So I am actually going to design in on my PCB holes for every one of the GPIO ports if I choose to solder uh, pogo pins into them. But I don't have to solder the pogo pins there. They're just going to be on the board. 
and I will actually have jumpers connections out of every one of those ports as well so that I could actually uh, pull th additional services off there if I wanted to for test purposes. And finally, I might as well put a reset switch on here just in case I need it to. So that whole design of that, which is pretty simple, it's just a bunch of connections, I've actually uh, mocked up in KiCad so that I can actually order my PCB and get my friends at PCBWay to manufacture that for us. The KiCad model I'm going to share with you and it's on GitHub if you want to use it um, So and uh, or criticise it, it's fine, it's there. PCBWay were able to manufacture the board and get it to me in about a week which gives me a nice little board ready to solder up and uh, try this out. I found soldering all this up a little bit tricky with these pogo pins. Uh, the approach I took was actually to try and dry place all of the pins that I wanted into the board. So I chose to only do the SWD port and uh, two ground pins, but to place them in there and then to put a Pico W on the top to actually uh, secure them and make it into a little bit of a sandwich and then to clip that, turn it over and then solder the actual uh, pins in place. And that worked okay because the, the real problem here is, is keeping these pins vertical. So that's got me this working little board here and I'm able to then clip that uh, using just a little plastic clip onto the back of my display that's got a Pico W attached to it and then I can actually use SWD and debugging as I want to straight onto that chip and to that uh, um, processor board which is really cool. There's suddenly been some trial and error involved in this little project. Just getting the alignment of the SWP port to the GPIO port took some work plus there's that fiddly art of soldering those pogo pins. After struggling with soldering pogo pins, I came across a faceless text video on YouTube on how to solder these. He first tacks them in place and then turns them up the other way before soldering them properly. It works really well. Go check out the video. I'll put a link in the description. I hope you found this video useful. It's certainly a tool I'm going to use in some of my future projects. Let me know in the comments. If you like this video and it helps your learning or your projects, then why not drop me a cash tip using that super thanks button below the video or the payment link in the description. Remember, I'm saving these up to get myself to the open source conference in San Francisco. That's a long way from here in the UK and I'd appreciate your help in getting me there and I'd love to meet you all there too. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like the video and please subscribe so you don't miss the next video and I will see you very soon. Bye bye for now.